in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. The chestnut tree, the wishing well. I'll be seeing you in every lovely summer's day, in everything that's light and gay. I'll always think of you that way. I'll find you in the morning sun And when the night is new I'll be looking at the moon But I'll be seeing you summer's day in everything that's light and gay I'll always think of you that way I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is new I'll be looking at the
Nem faz, nem é não. Stand please. In the water of baptism, Sweden and Michelle and Jaden Jalen died in Christ and rose with him to new life. May they now share with him eternal glory. With the healthy and the sick, with the work and the weak, let us go to God's house. Thank God, we go to God's house. Let us go to God's house. Let us go to God's house. We go celebrate. We go celebrate. We go celebrate. Oh, we go Praise the Lord with our heavenly song. 
joy and you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit. good morning my dear sisters and brothers good morning, God. in a day like this someone will say why 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 all of us will say why 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 but at the end of the day, God knows the reason why it happened like this. We have no answer to our questions. But in another way, if we believe in Christ, he has mentioned that to us, that when we live a good life, we will have a special place in his right hand. Amen? Amen. And that should give us the hope and trust in God that our brother and uh, two brothers and sister, they are in his right hand where he prepared for them. Amen. And we pray that the Almighty God will consult all of us that gathered here and for those that are viewing as well, that may the Almighty God will give us his loving consolation. Let us pray. Let us pray for Mr. Sweden, Michelle and Jalen, that they may share in Christ's victory and let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Amen. Amen. So um, please, uh, sit please. And I will invite um, those of you that have a mobile phone, please, uh, you should respect this moment by putting it in vibration or you should shoot it off for just uh, an hour, please. And the person doing the rheology, please um, come forward. The boy is doing the attribute. The attribute. Nobody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. 
For those of you who don't know me, I am Janela, granddaughter of Switzerland, Anthony Domingue. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank everyone for being there for us in this difficult time. We appreciate every phone call, text, pop-ups, and condolences. We're here today to celebrate the life of this wonderful man. Swetan Anthony Domingue, my grandfather, live a full life of joy, dance and happiness. Daddy was a son, brother, husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, cousin, and friend to us all. Daddy was a man of many words. When he spoke, everyone listened. He was also a man who loved to dance. Many would say, including Miss Nura, his good friend, when you danced with him, you felt like a queen. This is how special my grandfather, a king after God, made us feel. My grandfather, Swetin Anthony Doming, was an incredible man and a hard worker. He was part of the first group of black technicians that work in Telco. I will always remember his legs crossed, hands rubbing his stomach, and a hearty laugh. Daddy was passionate about everyone's birthday. He never forgot our birthday. We used to look forward to that phone call as early as early as 7 a.m. in the morning for our birthday wishes from Daddy. He was always concerned about his family and friends. He always made my mom call to find out if we were okay and if the grandkids had food, the great grands had food. We loved him dearly. Uncle Mervyn, his brother, was loved by everyone. He was the only person that called Daddy Mox or the gentleman, and he would refer to himself as a rebel. He could talk his way out of an ag any argument. He was the person that introduced uh. Everybody have to read over that. This is a tribute from Uncle Mervyn. My brother was loved by everyone. He was the only person that called me Mox or a gentleman and he referred to himself as the rebel. He could talk his way out of any argument. He was the person that introduced me to the rum shop. He was afraid of being alone and definitely was afraid of death and cemeteries. When his mom died, he found himself in the middle of the Mayara Cemetery alone. Of course, he began to cold sweat. Anyways, this untimely death of his granddaughter and her son only proves that he really needed the company. He is not alone, and furthermore, there are many more waiting to greet him at the pearly gates. He will always live on in our hearts, and I am glad that I was chosen to be his brother and to be part of my family for 94 years. He, he ain't heavy. He was my brother with a, what a privilege. Whenever I think about daddy, I will always remember how he would crack a joke and laugh. Laugh out loud. He had a nickname for most of his grandchildren. Dilsia was called Natty. Sharin was called Shireen. Angel was the prince. Jinal, of course, me, Jin. <laughs> Shalanda Landy, Michelle Mish, Darcel Darcy, Christopher Columbus. Jesus was called Chinaman. Crystal was called Alana. Kerry was Kerr. Makita, Makita. Dariel was Indian. He used to share stories of his childhood about Uncle Mervyn and him. I never won. They saw them vex with each other. The love they both had was unconditional. They hugged every time they met, shared laughs, secrets, and danced together. Daddy looked forward to Uncle Mervyn coming to Trinidad every year for his birthday to have breakfast. Auntie Teresa, Auntie Julie, Auntie Mavis, Daddy, and Uncle Mervyn all grew up together. They were cousins, but grew up like siblings. He was like a brother to all of them. 
Auntie Anne was always by his side for all occasions. She would always pass through and check up on him and always made sure that he had his vital supply, which was his black label. <laughs> she never missed anything that concerned him, neither did him for her. Not to forget Uncle Barry and Auntie Nora. Uncle Barry was like a little brother to him. He would always be there when Daddy called anything. Anything that Daddy was invited to, Uncle Barry was there and vice versa. You couldn't invite one without the other. He was even by his side when he took his last breath. Auntie Nora was always his girl. He always make sh made sure to make time on Sundays after church to go and look for her. They were the two eldest Timothys alive. Unfortunately, she died a few days after him. Uncle Mervyn, again, my brother was loved by everyone. He was the only person that called me Mox or the Gentleman. He referred to himself as the Reverend. Yeah. Mary and Salyan, we could have gone to our father. This is from Mary and Salyan. We could have gone to our father for anything. He was the most lenient of both parents. Every time we asked our mother to go out, she would say, ask your father. <laughs> and when we did, he would say, go ahead. Our mother would be totally upset. We had an amazing childhood. Every weekend, we would visit a different part of Trinidad. He also made sure that we knew all our family. We remembered he bought us tickets to see the Jackson 5 and made sure we had transport to go to the concert and back home. Uncle Andrew, this is from him. Uncle, <coughs> Uncle, it is with deepest sorrow and sadness that I write this short tribute to you. Your death came as a shock to us, and as you sit in the arms of the Almighty, your family and friends mourn your death, but you left many wonderful memories for us. You were one in a million, Uncle. You were kind, humble, full of laughter, and very caring. As a kid growing up, you gave me the nickname of Prince. Sometimes I felt like I was a son you never had. I always look forward to going to Mayaro so we can sit and chat. You were my family historian and go-to person for anything and everything in the, Trinity, in the Timothy family. My trips to Mayaro will never be the same again. I will miss those weekend and birthday calls. I will miss hearing your gregarious laughter on the other end of the phone. I will miss you, Uncle. May our Lord comfort and sustain your family and may you keep you safe, resting in eternal peace with Michelle and her baby till the resurrection day. Daddy Richard told me to tell you that he wouldn't forget you that he couldn't stand by and watch you go to your grave. But the plan you both devised to drink those beers would be carried out. Daddy, you will forever be remembered and missed by your family and friends. To Michelle, Joe Kimmerers. On behalf of my family, I want to first extend my gratitude to all the relatives, friends, and attendees who have come today to honor this great woman and for those who have sent their condolences. Michelle Joachim Reyes, a person we have all come to love and cherish for many years. Michelle was born on the 25th of November, 1983. She was the third child of seven children. Michelle was the daughter of Roger and Mary Joachim. Her father will always remember her by her fat red cheeks and her deep dimples. Michelle was her, Michelle was her grandmother's baby. All of us had known her in a variety of roles. A mother, a wife, a sister, a daughter, a cousin, a granddaughter, an aunt, a niece, and a great friend. I had the privilege to know her as a sister and a midwife. On the 1st of May 2000, Michelle delivered me. She was a great sister, followed by a second mother. She was married to Shane Reyes for five years, and they both were together for 17 years. They both have three beautiful boys, wonderful boys together. Michelle was always a family person. Their relationship was a bit strange, though she was a private person, but loved her family dearly. 
She used to always look forward to her husband coming home from work. They both love cooking together. Justin, from Justin. My mother was not just a mother, but a best friend. She was a family person. She used to always stand for her children despite the situation. One thing he admired about her is that she always used to stay at home and spend time with them. She stuck with them through thick and thin. She never tolerated nonsense, and he admired that about her. From Jordan. My mother was a hard-working woman. She was always there to help me in the toughest times of my life, and I, re and I really appreciate that about her. She was my lover, my best friend, and my number one supporter. She would have always told me, despite the situation, I would always be her baby boy. She loved me with her all. Mommy, we love you. Huh? Mommy was overprotective about us. She, she would have comforted me in every, in every time comforted me every time I felt sad or down. She will always be my boss, my lover, and my best friend. I love you, Mommy. From Janelle. Michelle and I were very close despite our differences. I was that overprotective big sister when it comes to her. We laughed, cried, and confided in each other. When we were in primary school, Michelle didn't like to be out on rainy days. She would cry when the time comes to go to school and it is rain, and rain is falling. I always looked at her and saw the sadness in her eyes, which made my eyes fill up with water. I would then ask her why she's crying, and she would respond by saying that she wants to go home. <laughs> so I would wet our uniforms, shoes, and proceed back home. When our grandmother saw us, she would ask what happened, and we stayed, and we said that we got wet. She would make us go inside and change our clothes immediately while saying, I know today wasn't a good day to send y'all to school. You know? We would then give each other an eye knowing that we, we got through this. Michelle was a coward until this one incident in the park. <laughs> while talking with a few friends, a girl named Rochelle woke up and asked, what is our problem? So I asked, do you see a problem? So she began to walk up closer, and knowing me, I never backed down, like Janelle earlier. Before she could have said anything, would pop and cough, and then the fight begun. Michelle ran straight home crying. Mary asked what she was crying for. She told her that I was fighting, that Janelle was fighting in the park. Michelle got a good cocktail for leaving Janelle that day. After that good licking, Michelle never left my side. <laughs> From Christopher, sis, you'll always be missed for your con con contagious laugh and motherly love. Even though we were miles apart, I remember you always reaching out to check in on me and we would chat about how your boys were performing in school. You always ensure that your kids' educational needs were met. That is so true. Anne would go to the extra mile to make sure that your family had food on the table, even if it meant that you had to go hungry. You were the true optimum, epitome of the word mother to your boys. Sis, the last time I visited, I wished I had hugged you just a little bit tighter because I didn't know it was my last chance. Sleep on, my sister, sleep tight. For now, with you in the sky is night. But after the night will come day before, therefore, I will wait hoping to see you awake, to see you awake. From Dariel. Dara said she will never forget those texts every, every week saying, come and spend the night tomorrow, and they will all have a movie night. Or when she cooks something special, she'll call and say, Dari, I cook, so by today, so today, are you on work? I'm sending one of those boys with something for you. Michelle, Michelle, when I heard that you called my name in the hospital, I couldn't... Okay, from Janelle. Michelle, when I heard that you called my name in the hospital, I couldn't be there to respond. But I know you wanted to tell me to take care of your boys, but I want you to know that they will be take, well taken care of by Shane and our family. No? Thank you.
Stand, please. O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayer on behalf of your servant, Sweden, and Michelle and Jalen, whom you have called out of this world, and because they put their trust and hope in you, command that they be carried safely home to heaven and enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Sit please for the readings. My soul is shut out from peace. Wait. Is that it? Show me that. Say anyone from here? Mm hmm. Bonita? Yes. Okay, hi. Okay. A reading from the Book of Wisdom The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them in the eyes of the unwise. They did appear to die. Their going look like a disaster. They are leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessing be. God has put them to the test and, provide and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy are with those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord.
says the Lord, take for your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Alleluia. From the Holy Gospel according to John. To you, Lord. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. Jesus says to his disciples, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare the place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me. So that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I sit, please. So I, I really don't know where to start, but I will start from the spirituality of our dear brother here. I do call him young man. So I call him young man because anytime we have any occasion, he's always there and he's always here every morning. I don't know how he comes, but I know where I, when, when after mass, how he goes home because there is always someone to drop him at Mayaro Junction or at home. He is the kind of person who knows everybody. He has the history of Mayaro and he, the history of his own family in the tip of his hand. Family is very, very, very important to him. Anytime I meet him is a story from how this church started where he was living down now in the place, he's in the sea now. But he knows all his family 
and he know the history of uh, of Mayaro and find a lot the, the history of the country as well. His own family is scattered all over. And anywhere I, I remember that I went to many places. Once I identify myself with Mayaro, they always say, Do you know Mr. Sweden? Do you know him? I say yes. I call him young man. He is like, well, I must say this, instead of preaching now, I'm telling, kind of saying the the the, the nice time that I had with him before. God called him. He is like a grandfather to me. And I would talk to him like a friend. There was a day he called me. And you know, anytime he called me, we will laugh and laugh and laugh. I get to know many of his family through him. I get to know Mary, his daughter, his son-in-law, and all the family through him. But whenever he calls me, it's all we will laugh. And people will say, hey, why, who are you talking to? And after that, I would say, you know, one of my friends, he is 94. And he would say, 94? Uh, yes, he's 94. He was a really, really a loving person. And I believe that all of us here, we will miss him. Or we are already missing him. The, the, uh, my brothers and sisters that come to morning mass here every day, I'm glad that you are here to support him because he's always here in the church. Either rain or sun, he is always here. And it's very important as well, I would say, for the family. As many of you are Catholic, I would say, do not let this relationship that he bounds with the church just wipe away like that. I will encourage you to learn from him and bounce and build your own spirituality by the most example, the kind of life that he lived between himself and God. I get to know two of his granddaughter one day. He came and we do the celebration and I asked him, I said, who among the two of them, who is your favorite? And he said, Father, you put me on the spot. <laughs> and then he whispered and said, the thick fat one. <laughs> That is why he said to me, so, <laughs> so he, he is a, a really loving person. And anytime we have a gathering here, you know, he is the ladies' man. He dance, you know, despite his age, he would dance and he enjoying life to the full. And I would thank the family too, seeing him in the coffin with one of his best dress and hat. That really, um, I would say thank you for that because I was wondering um, if I would come and see him with, with all tied, all wrapped up. But I thank God that um, you choose what he really cherished in life, the, the heart and in that beautiful clothes. Thank you for that. He lived a life that each and every one of us should be able to learn from him by loving his family. I remember when he celebrated his um, 98th anniversary here, then I was not a priest, about to be ordained a priest. And he came to me and said, um, you know, my anniversary is cl coming close to hand. He said, I want you to do the, uh, the mass. I said, no, um, go and talk to the parish priest. And he says, uh, by then you will be priest. And then I catch myself, I say, oh yes, yes. My ordination was in July. The celebration, I think, was in August. So he had all his calculation already beforehand, before he approached me. And that day, I was surprised for those of you who were here. The church was packed full outside. Everywhere was packed full. Why? Because of that love that he had, that love for his family, and love for everyone. He is the type that interacts with everybody. Andre here is his best friend. I was surprised that when he told, I know his mom before I get to know him. But he relates with a lot of people that I know. Young people, aged people, everyone he relates with them very, very, very well. And that is the quality that Christ wants from us. That love, that love. 
And I pray that that love will bounce all of your family and friends. Let that love continue to shine. The first reading tells us today about the, the, the souls of the virtual people are in the hands of the Lord. Now, who is a virtual person? A virtual person is someone who loves God, someone who loves his brothers and sisters, someone who loves his neighbors. When we die and live a good life, when we live and live a good life, you can, you can leave the baby, you know. No, leave, leave the baby, leave. So God will continue to protect us. That is if we live a good life. But if we live our own life here on earth without any meaning, without any um, touch of life, it means that we just, we just came into this, this world like rain, it just pour and it will disappear. But to live a good life is very important. To touch one another, to help one another is very important. Sometimes when our dear ones, when God called them, you will see people bringing flowers, people bringing all people wear nice clothes. But we have to do it now when we are alive. Show that person that you care for him. Give him the flower for him to receive the flower himself and appreciate you. And for those of you who will bring flowers here, I, I hope and I believe that you know him. But let's do it when we are still alive that we will collect those things we will wear our beautiful clothes and go to the person and say, you know, we come to celebrate with you. Let that person know that you care for him. But if we wait until when the Lord called the person, the person wouldn't know that you bring flowers to him. The person wouldn't know that you love him. The person wouldn't know that you care for him. If you, even if it is called now that we cannot move around, call somebody and say, you know, um, especially at this time, Happy New Year, and let the person know that you care for him. You can imagine him at the age of 94, calling a young, a young person, you know, it's, it's so remarkable of him that um, he would call and say, I'm, I'm just to find out how I am doing. And that is the, the relationship that Christ wants from us, especially family family and friends. Let's see that we learn from him to live a good life, to live this life to the full. I believe if we are to collect all the pictures of events and all of that, we may have to have a book, book like this that will contain of him in so many places where he went and the, the life that he touched by living in this world. You do not have to have uh, riches in order to touch somebody's life. But that gesture, just be there for that person, is more important than um, the things that we give out. Those things that you give out to, to people, uh, when you give them, they will collect and they keep them away. But when you are there for the person, your presence a lot means a lot for one another. Amen? Um, and it's uh, sad as well that um, today we are celebrating this day and with his own granddaughter and a baby as well. I've heard a lot about Michelle. She uh, take from her grandfather that family life. If he did not live a good life to bring all family together, she wouldn't learn from there to know that family is very important. So I would say to all of us that are here, let's learn from the two of them that family is important. Interacting with one another is very important. And today in the gospel, Jesus talking to us, he says he is going away to prepare a place for us. And Thomas asks, Where is, how can we know the way? That is before they put the Bible for us. But now we have the Bible that we can read for ourselves to know where is that place where 
God is preparing for us or has already prepared for those who trust in Him. And how can we know the way? To know the way is to live in good times with your brothers and sisters, to be kind to one another, to love one another, to help people. That is the way. We are, if we live that kind of life, it means that we are beginning to follow that way. Amen? May the Lord continue to give us the grace and consult all of us and give us the grace that one day, when our day is ready for the Lord to call us, we will be able to have family and friends and people around to come and say goodbye. But if we do not live a good life, even family members sometimes, they will give excuse. You know, when you call and say, you know, um, next week is the funeral, and they will start telling you how they have already booked themselves to go to some celebration. But if we live a good life, nobody will complain, nobody will give an excuse, but rather everybody will be here. I am glad that we have the young stars among us, the great grandchildren, the grandchildren among us. Now these children will look up to us, we the big people. If we live a good life, children normally copy exactly the things that we do. But if we do not live a good life, they will still copy those kind of life, and that is the kind of life they will grow up with. But our dear friend here, our father, have lived a good life that we will be able to to see, I think we all of us have seen this kind of life that he lived, and we'll be able to say, you know, a grandpa, a great grandpa, my father lived a good life. Let me try to pick one or two things from the way of his life and follow that life. And that kind of life will be the one to prepare us to that place where God already has prepared for us. We that follow the right path. Amen? May God continue to consult us, give us the grace to live with one another in harmony, especially at this time that we cannot interact as before. May God continue to protect all of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand, please. God, the Almighty Father, rising Christ, His Son from the dead, with confidence will ask Him to save all His people, living and the dead. For Sweden and Michelle and Jalen, who in baptism was given the pledge of internal life, that they may now be admitted to the company of the saint. Lord, hear us. For our brothers and sisters who live here on earth with us, we pray that the Almighty God will grant them that special place that He has prepared for them. Lord, hear us. And let us pray for all of us that gathered here. We pray that the Almighty God will continue to consult us. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those that are sick. We pray that the Almighty God will lay his healing hands upon them and heal them. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. And let us continue to pray for all those that work in the hospital. We pray that the Almighty God will continue to protect them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And let us pray for the entire family of Mr. Domin, we pray that the Almighty God will continue to consult them, especially at this hard time that three have to, have to go. We pray that the Almighty God who called them will console his family. Lord, hear us. 
And please, um, you can now bring your own intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to continue to intercede for us as we said. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of death. Amen. Almighty and ever living God, we bring our prayers before you, Lord. We ask you to grant them with mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sit, please. Acceptable to God the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray for your servant, Mr. Sweden and Michelle Angela, on whom funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of consolation so that should their sting of sin have claimed to, to them or any human fault have affiltered them, it may be your loving gift by forgiving and wiping away their tears through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you make all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bounds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whom commands we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took the bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and internal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, As we celebrate the memorial of the seventh passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and assumption into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and to recognize in the sacrificial victim by whom dead, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an internal offerings to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyr, with St. Peter and Paul, St. Anthony, St. Joseph, St. Agnes, and with all the saints, on whom constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pregnant church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Jason, our Bishop, the orders of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. A listening graciously to the prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Mr. Sweden, Michelle, and Jalen, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant them who was united with your son in a dead like his, may also be one in his resurrection. When from the earth he will rise up in the flesh those whom have died and transform our lonely body after the parting of his own glorious body to our departed sisters and brothers too, and to all whom were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admit to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. When you will wipe away every tears from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is to good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
Savior commands and found by the divine teaching, we dare to say. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessing, hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, whom said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. and brothers, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. And it is time for the Holy Communion. Please, only Catholics are invited to come for the communion. If you are not um, Catholic, please just remain in your seat.
to stand, please. We await our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to confirm with his glorious body. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant, Sweden, Michelle, and Jelen, whom has joined from this world, may be this sacrifice, be cleansed and free them from sin, and so receive the everlasting joy of the resurrection of Christ, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sit, please. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Sweden, Michelle and Jelan, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Mr. Sweden and Michelle and Jelan again and enjoy their friendship, although this congregation will depart in sorrow. The mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. To you, O oh Lord, we commend the soul of our dear Sweden, Michelle, and Jelan, your servant in the sight of this world. They are dead. In your sight, may they live forever. 
forgive whatever sins they have committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant them everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are gathered here to commend our dear sister and brothers to God our Father and to commend their body to the earth in the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us continue to pray for them. Because God has chosen to call them from this life to himself, we commend their body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like he is in glory. For he is the rising, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our dear sister and brothers to the Lord, that the Lord may embalm them in peace and rise up their body on the last day. Amen. Amen. Stand, please. Bow your head for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the humble, to the prayer of the humble. Hear are your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your listening goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I sit, please. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you that gathered here this afternoon, um, the children, the grandchildren, great-grandchildren, uh, everybody who happened to be here. I pray that the Almighty God will continue to consult all of us and give us the strength to continue to bear the lost. And on behalf of the parish priest and all the members of this parish, um, we said, um, we said, uh, I save our, our condolence, and uh, we are going as a parish, we are going to miss him because he comes here every morning for morning mass and all the event. Amen? Amen? And I pray that all of us that remain, we will be able to bounce in our own religion. It does not really matter either you are Catholic or you are Muslim or you are, you are Hindu, but um, as far as you are alive and you believe in God, try to bounce with your religion so that in times of joy, in times of sadness, they will come and support you. Amen? Amen? Because if we live our life in a day like this and nobody is around us, the pains remain with us. But if we have family and, um, and friends, who come to consult us, it helps to heal the wounds and helps to help the pains as well. So I would say um, thank you again. Stand, please. Jelan, Michelle, and Mr. Smithin. May the angel lead you into paradise 
May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and internal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham, where Lazarus is born no longer. May you find internal rest. Amen. Amen. Internal rest grant unto them, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Any announcement? After, after Mass, cemetery radics? Okay. Okay. After the Mass, you all are invited to go to the cemetery. Open on my way to the Lord, to the Lord, 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 to the Lord. I'm walking on my way to the Lord, to the Lord who's waiting there for me. So let's go join and praise the Lord, 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 Lord. So let's go join.
you 